it's really great to have everybody here. I think I know most of the people in this room. It's exciting to see all of you here. And, uh, you know, there, there are some people who were unable to make it tonight. And uh, those people are very special people. And I know they're very special to Bill. And those are people that have gone on before us in their home of the Lord. And when we were just a young congregation, there was a fellow named Dale Nicholson. He was the first one who moved on to be with the Lord. And then as time has progressed through these 40 years, people have gone on like Kathy Castile. She's no longer with us, but I think maybe she's listening in right now, wouldn't you think? And then there was Bob and Ann Cervanka. And there was Sherry Taylor. And there was Jacqueline Matcham. And there was Mark Goodwin. And there was Dick Wilson. And there was Roberto Munoz Flores. And there was Jack Fisher. And so many other dear friends that couldn't be here tonight. But you know, they, they really represent uh, us and the family that has grown here. We have a unique family, the Valley Vineyard. And what I want to share tonight, uh, it really in, in many respects reflects, Bill, the way you've touched our lives through the years. There's a passage in the book of Hebrews, and the, the writer of Hebrews says this, remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Well, there may be one exception, and that's Bill's driving habits. But other than that, <clears throat> I would encourage you. I want to just share a little bit of a story with you. And the things that I share with you really speak of the body or the family that has gathered together over these last 40 years. But when Joe and I, uh, we, we started here, and our three young sons showed up at the Valley Vineyard at Bartola Junior High, high school in January of 1984. We were deeply touched by the sweet presence of the Lord, the beautiful worship that was new to us, and the tall young man imparting the word of God. We grew very attached to the people of the Valley Vineyard and became, it became home to us. And we would not miss actually a single service. Even when I was on vacation from work, we'd make a point of getting back on Sunday morning because we wanted to be a part of the worship and we wanted to hear Bill speak. And uh, it was a wonderful place for our three sons to grow up. A few years, years later, I was asked to join the staff. It was an honor to be a part of the team and to become a, Bill's assistant. I don't know if you remember this, Bill, but I remember when the first day I was on, you took me out and we got a desk for my office. Do you remember that? And I still have the desk in the office to this day, but it was just immediately Bill was there to take care of me and make sure that I had every need that I needed as I entered into this new role. It was an honor to be a part of the team and become Bill's assistant. I was immediately impressed with his integrity, his faithfulness, his servant's heart, and his strong and decisive leadership. These fine qualities that you have, Bill, were an amazing um, you know, inspiration to me. There was one thing that I detected early on. We were very different. <laughs> he likes Snickers, I like Milky Way. He liked Coke, and I like Pepsi. He gave this to me one time. He liked USC. I like UCLA. <laughs> you know, the list could go on and on and on and on. And if you know us very well, we are very different. But uh, this is what I, I, I found out. Our differences crafted a perfect complement to carry out what was needed to shepherd the people of the Valley Vineyard for nearly 28 years. Yes, differences can cause tension, as some of you may know in your own families. But for the most part, Bill and I kept things on an even keel. It was a joy and a blessing to serve alongside of him. 
and the wonderful staff of the Valley Vineyard. And I say this, I want to talk about the staff because I really, again, I believe it does reflect Bill. I'm so grateful for our staff, the servants, servants, yes, but faithful to the core. They've always been there to meet the needs of the people. If you go behind the scenes, you would find them working long hours at minimal pay and to serve us. I dearly love them and have the deepest respect for them and their families. When I was about to leave staff, someone asked me, uh, are, are you going to leave the church? And I responded with, no, this is my family. The vineyard is my home. You all have been uh, a very special to our family throughout the years, and I hope we have, have had the same to, been the same to you. I can't thank you enough for your lives. When people leave the vineyard and come back later to visit us, many have said to me, this is our home. There is something you all do to make this place home. And Joe and I are so grateful to be a part of the family of the Valley Vineyard. In closing, I just want to mention this. Bill, your teaching, I'm going to read it. Bill, your teaching has always impacted Joe and me. We can't thank you enough for all your hard work in preparing message after message. We like that you don't preach at us but you impart the word of God in such a natural and powerful way. Who will forget your cute laughter as you teach or share a story? Two things that I have detected over the years about your teaching. First, your teaching comes right from God. It's prophetic. Some would call it, it's a rhema. When many people say, he spoke to me today. It's a beautiful thing. Your words have been fittingly spoken to touch our hearts and have led to life change in us. Second, you have not only prepared your message for us, the hearer, but also for yourself. When teaching, you have shared humbly how you fall short of what you're teaching. You make it clear when you teach that we all are on a journey together to becoming like Jesus the one who lived this life perfectly. Bill, thank you for serving the Lord so faithfully and us, his people, all these years. I love you, my dear friend.